Hello, welcome to another episode of Budgets. In this chapter, we will learn some ways to keep costs under control. Remember, a dollar spent, a saved in cost, is a dollar earned in profit. So we will see how managers can keep the cost of direct material and labors down to avoid wastage. So, you have seen budgeted or estimated numbers before. Where do these numbers come from? They can either come from previous year's performance or they can come from some industry benchmarks or norms or standard. For example, there is such a thing as the most efficient way to make a pizza, meaning not using too much but not too little of dough or cheese or the right amount of time. So, most of the budgeted numbers are a combination of what the company did in previous years and what everyone else in similar business considers achievable. If companies try to force unachievable standards on employees, they will get frustrated because standards cannot be achieved with their best effort. We will talk about two types of standards or benchmarks. Quantity standards tell us how much of each material should be used to make one product. Price standards tell us <clears throat> how much should be paid for each unit of raw material or labor. Budgeted or standard cost is just standard price times standard quantity. These standards which we have been calling budgeted numbers are compared with actual results at the end of the year. Any difference between the two is called variance. Please note that not all variances are bad for the company. If you budgeted to use one pound of cheese for each pizza and you used only half a pound for the same quality of pizza, this variance is good for the company because you used the cheese carefully, did not waste any. Same can be said about labor. If you budgeted to spend 15 minutes on making one pizza but made it in 10 minutes only, you must have worked very efficiently, expertly and without wasting any time. So variances that are good for the company are called favorable variances. Those variances where actual quantity of raw material used is much more than budgeted are called unfavorable variances because either material or labor or money should not have been wasted. So please be careful when you assign a letter to a variance. Typically, if actual material quantity used or price paid is higher than budgeted, it is unfavorable. If actual costs are lower than budgeted, then variance is favorable. Variances are an effective tool to keep actual numbers close to the planned numbers, but it needs data collection, calculation, and analysis. We will talk about three levels of variances in this chapter. Actually, we will talk about four levels. Level zero is just comparison of budgeted operating income and actual operating income. Level one compares the budgeted numbers with actual numbers. Level two and three break the variances further and analyze them much more deeply to determine what went wrong, where and by how much. Let us learn the concept of static budgets before we start calculating variances. A static budget is a budget that is made before the start of the year. It has budgeted prices and quantities of each manufacturing cost for a planned volume of production. For example, if the company plans to sell 1000 pizzas next month, then it can make a budget planning what should be paid for each input and how much quantity of each input should be used. These budgets can be used only when the actual volume of production turns out to be the same as the planned volume. Typically, higher or lower demand of product or higher or lower prices of raw material or any other circumstances can force a company to make higher or lower number of units than planned. In this case, a static budget cannot be used to compare actual performance with the budgeted performance, with the budgeted numbers I mean. For example, if a company planned to make 1000 pizzas and planned on spending $5,000 of total cost to make the pizzas and actual production turns out to be say 2000 pizzas and actual cost spent to make these 2000 pizzas is say $9,000, then it would be unfair to say that the company spent $4,000 more than planned. So it has huge unfavorable variances, but that would not be fair, right? What about the fact that 2,000 pizzas were made instead of only 1,000 pizzas? 
We will revisit this issue very soon. Let us first learn to make a static budget and compare it with actual numbers to calculate static budget variance. As I said before, it is a very basic analysis, but let us see what we can learn from it. Let us look at a simple example. The company plans to make 5,000 units and its manufacturing costs are given to you. Making a static budget is easy. Put together all costs of production uh, and we are done. Notice two things here. One is that we added a column in the middle to show the budgeted per unit cost for each input. You will see soon why we need it. Second thing to note is that we did not convert the fixed cost into a per unit number. The reason is that fixed cost is not a per unit number and will not change even if we change the number of units produced. So our static budget says that we, will, we can plan to spend $80,000 total to make 5,000 units. Now that we have a static budget, let us calculate static budget variance. It is called level one analysis of variances since it is the most basic calculation of variances. Suppose that the company actually produced twice the number of units planned and spent the given costs on production. Static budget variance is simply the difference between static budgeted costs and actual costs. We just copied the static budget from previous slide and stacked actual costs next to it. In the last column, we have the differences for each uh, in each row. For example, we planned on spending $25,000 on material but actually spent $53,000 on material. So the variance is $28,000 unfavorable. Why unfavorable? Because companies' actual costs are more than budgeted costs and it is not good for the company. The total column shows that the company spent $77,000 more than budgeted numbers. So unfavorable variance of 77,000 has happened. Let us revisit the issue of unfairness we were talking about in comparing static budget with actual results. If units actually produced are hugely different from units budgeted for production. Comparing a budget that was made for 5,000 units to actual numbers that are based on actual production of say 10,000 units would be like comparing apples to oranges. A fair thing to do would be to remake the budget for the actual number of units produced using the same per unit budgeted costs that were originally used in the static budget but adjusted for actual output. These budgets are called flexible bu budgets because they can be flexed for any level of activity once the per unit budgeted costs are given in the static budget. Flexible budget will help us separate the variances into two portions. One that is due to the difference between budgeted and actual production and the other which is due to the difference between prices and quantities paid, sorry, prices and quantities used for actual production. Let us continue with the previous example and try to make a flexible budget. Here you are told that the company actually made double of what it planned to make. So what would be the budget for these many units? It is like saying that if the company had a crystal ball and could foresee that it would be making 10,000 units instead of 5,000, what budget would it have made? So we take the per unit cost of all our inputs from the static budget uh, example and multiply them by actual production to make a flexible budget. Notice that the fixed cost is not changing. We plan to spend this much on fixed cost regardless of number of units produced. So only variable cost can be flexed. Also notice that to make double the units, the cost did not double. Why? It is because of the fixed cost. They did not double with the production. So total cost is less than double and per unit cost has come down from $16 per unit to $15 per unit. Can you see that? So, if you are asked to make a flexible budget for 8,000 units, you think you can do it? It should be $5 plus $6 plus $3, $14 of variable cost per unit times 8,000 units plus $10,000 of fixed cost. So, the flexible budget for 8,000 units should have a total of 122,000. Notice that variable cost per unit remains the same. It just gets multiplied by actual output. Also notice that the total fixed costs remain unchanged too. This is because fixed costs are planned for the period and not for a specific volume of production. So for 8,000 units, 
we will get 14 unit uh, dollars per unit of variable cost times 8,000 plus 10,000 dollars of fixed cost and you are done. Flexible budgets break up the difference between static numbers and actual numbers into two portions as we said before. The portion that arises due to differences in level of production or sales, production and sales pretty much mean the same thing in this chapter. So that difference is called sales volume variance. The portion that arises due to the difference between actual spending and budgeted spending given the actual output is called flexible budget variance. Now let us continue with our previous example. I have copied the information about static budget and actual results from the previous slide. We have also added information regarding budgeted and actual revenues excuse me, so that we can make an income statement. Let us take a look. For now, you can ignore the formulas on the top. You will understand them very soon. Just look at the table. In the first column, we have copied the actual results and in the last column, we have our old static budget with revenues thrown in. Remember, we made a static budget for 5,000 units. So given the revenue of $20 a unit, we have $100,000 of budgeted revenue. The rest of the numbers in the static bu budget column are the same. Now, look at the middle column of flexible budget. Notice that the first number there is the number of units equal 10,000, which is always equal to our actual output level. Second, notice that the actual output level of 10,000 is multiplied by per unit budgeted numbers. I have put them up on top to refresh your memory as to what the numbers were. So we have 10,000 times 20 for revenue in the flexible budget column and 10,000 times 5 and 6 and 3 for material, labor and variable manufacturing overhead respectively. Also note that difference between flexible budget column and static budget column is entirely due to the difference in number of units produced. One column has 5,000 times per unit cost and the other column has 10,000 times the same budgeted per unit cost. In the sales volume variance column, all the numbers are different because of the difference in volume produced. Remember that sales volume variance will always be zero for fixed costs. Also notice that all the numbers in the sales volume variance column look hugely unfavorable, but the one for revenue <coughs> is hugely favorable. This is because actual revenue is more than budgeted uh, revenue and that is good for the company, meaning favorable. But actual costs being more than budgeted costs are unfavorable for the company. Overall, it looks like the company has unfavorable sales volume variance of $3,000. Are you with me so far? Now, let's take a look at flexible budget variance column in between actual results and flexible uh, budget. Both these columns are based on the same 10,000 units produced, but the per unit cost used in the flexible column is what the company budgeted to pay for these inputs. So, flexible budget variance is just due to the fact that actual prices paid for the inputs and quantities used must have been different from those we budgeted. For example, company expected a revenue of 200,000 for 10,000 units at $20 a unit, but actually received $21 a unit, giving us a favorable variance of $10,000. You can compare all the other numbers in column two and four to get flexible budget variance for each item. <clears throat> for each item and get a total flexible budget variance of $3,000 favorable. So for 10,000 units, company actually did better than expected. A budget based on 10,000 units would budget an income of 50,000, but the company actually made $3,000 more than that. So we must have done pretty well. Notice, however, that the total difference between actual income and static budget income is zero, meaning that the company earned exactly what it planned Therefore, static budget variance given with the yellow arrow is zero. So a company might conclude that their earnings were right on the target and they don't need to improve or change anything. But a closer look at the data will show that although we came out even in the income comparison, we did spend a little too much on some costs, except for direct labor, where we have a favorable uh, variance. Also, marketing or sales department must have done very well because they brought in more revenue 
than planned. So in summary, if you had to look at this data and give, a, give bonus or salary increase to some managers or employees, which one would be your first choice? I think it would be fair to say that the revenue department did best, followed by labor department where flexible budget variance is favorable but we should look into variable manufacturing overheads more carefully where we have spent more five thousand dollars more than planned one last thing to note before we leave this slide and that is the total of flexible budget variance and sales volume variance is equal to static budget variance. This is because static budget variance is just the difference between actual and budgeted numbers and sticking flexible budget in the middle divides this variance into two pieces. So 3000 U plus 3000 F added together gives us a static budget variance of zero. This is a useful fact to know in those problems where any two variances are given and you will have to find the third. Also, adding variances together should be done carefully since variance is typically calculated as actual cost minus budgeted cost. I like to remember it as A minus B. It's easy to remember that way. So, actual cost minus budgeted cost. If the number is positive, it is unfavorable since we spent more than planned. So when you are solving an equation and you are given a favorable variance in the problem, be careful to put a minus sign in front of it. To get the solution uh, to get the solution right we will practice this more very soon this is a simple problem you are given actual and static budgets and you are asked to make a flexible budget what do you think you need to do remember flexible budget is actual output times budgeted per unit cost so we will first convert the numbers in the static budget column on a per unit basis and then multiply each one by actual sales of 13,000 units. Let us see what we get. So first thing to notice here is that the number of units in flexible budget column is the same as number of units of actual results column. Second thing to note is that the revenue in flexible budget column is 13,000 times 20.83, which is the budgeted price per unit in the static budget column. If you divided $250,000 of revenue by 12,000 in static budget column, you will get per unit revenue of 20.83. Similarly, if you divided the total variable cost by 12,000 units, you will get budgeted per unit cost of 14.58. We use the budgeted rates to multiply the actual output output to get flexible budget. Notice that F is always copied from stat static budget into flexible budget. In the end, flexible budget says that if the company had a crystal ball and could guess that it could end up making 13,000 units, then the company's budget would have budgeted a total income of 31,750, which is different from the static budget's expected income of 26,500. Now let's ask a few more questions. Can we stick in the two variance columns and calculate uh, the two variances? Also, we know that static budget variance is just the total of flexible budget variance and sales volume variance. We can add them together to check that our static budget variance is correct. So 11750U plus 5250F will give us 6500 unfavorable. Now, let us take a break here. <laughs> 